lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Conservation by James Flynn. This is a dystopian sci-fi novel that takes place in the not-too-distant future, and the story centers around this ship Conservation, which is basically this Noah's Ark in space. It is populated by potential colonists who are hoping to, you know, colonize another planet, and they also have plants and animals except that the ship goes missing, and so there is this mystery to what happened to the ship. I received a free copy of this book from the author in exchange for a fair and honest review, so disclosure on free bookness and being asked to do the review by the author. So the book starts off in the year 2034, and the Universal Mining Agency and its founder, Terence Tringley, have just announced the fact that they are going to launch the ship called Conservation. They are looking for potential colonists who are willing to live out the rest of their days and all their descendants living on this ship that is going to go out in search of a new home for humanity, another planet to land on, and set up new Earth, basically. They're also going to end up taking all of these plants and animals with them, stuff that they need for, you know, living, so things we're going to eat, but also just animals to help populate a new planet. And a lot of these contributions came from this one zoologist, David Kingston, like he made a massive contribution of animals to this ship. And I really enjoyed seeing the ship and what actually got sent up into space. So there are animals like the green winged macaw that are endangered in this version of the future and they get set on the ship and trying to see if they're gonna even survive in space. So the science animal loving geek of me loved that part of the story. The ship also represents this idea of hope and optimism for a better future and that humanity can survive and persevere and make it through because things on earth right now are really bad. There is Massive changes happening with the climate. Weather patterns are completely out of whack. There is flooding. Other places are experiencing famine. There is a massive overpopulation happening. Other animal species are endangered and risk going extinct. So Earth right now is not looking good. So we really are looking towards the future and what we could do somewhere else. So this book is broken up into different sections. The first part is the launch. Then we get into this 40 year later period happening in the 2070s where conservation has been out there for a while and it's been on its own and it's still communicating with Earth, but mostly they know that they're going to get reach a point where communication between Earth and the ship isn't going to be viable and so they're letting the ship kind of do its own thing. But they still want reports about what's happening and Earth still wants to know. And so conservation has been sending back status reports. That include things like how the crops are doing, how maintenance on the ship is going, and everything looks good. In fact, it looks a little too good, and one of the employees, Adam O'Donnell, is a little suspicious. Like, it's exactly where the projections said they would be, and there's no variance whatsoever, which there should be. They should be a little over, a little under. It's a little weird that nothing has gone wrong. And so Adam requests that there be a video link set up. And he wants to have a conference with some of the crew to find out what morale is like also. But when they get a hold of the ship, they could only talk to one person, Dolph Veal, who is this elderly crew member, and he seems a bit off. Like, it's just him, which is not what they're expecting. He seems distracted, and they're not exactly sure what to make of this transmission. And then shortly after talking to Veal, they lose all communication with the ship altogether. And it's super weird and strange and it becomes this big mystery because nobody can find out what happened to the ship. They don't know if there's a technical glitch happening or if something happened to the crew. Like, did the crew die? Are they all too sick? Or is the crew just like shutting them out, period? Like maybe the crew's fine, they just don't want to talk to Earth anymore. And so the interest in the ship becomes more of one of legends stories about what happened to the Titanic or the Mary Celeste or, you know, ships disappearing over the Bermuda Triangle type of stuff. Tons of conspiracy theories happening and nobody really knows what happens. And that's pretty much how things stay 
until we have another jump in storytelling and it's 10 years later and it's in the 2080s and all of a sudden now the mining company wants to send a probe they want to find out what happened to the ship they want to know what's going on was there a technical glitch is the crew in trouble do they need to send a rescue mission that suddenly happens and now the world is has renewed interest in what's going on on the ship and what happened to it so most of this book is just this mystery about what happened to the ship and why it happened part of the story is told from the perspective of people on the ship part of it's told from Beale's perspective and also other crew members like there's this guy Damien and this guy Robert we also see a kid sub who was born on the ship which is kind of cool and so he's never known what it's like to be on earth so as readers we know a little bit more about what's going on, on the ship than the characters on earth do but even knowing what actually happened it doesn't explain why it happened and so there's still a mystery about what happened and do we have the whole picture a good chunk of this book follows david kingston around who is a zoologist as he's trying to investigate because he's sort of this outside force from the agency so like kingston made this gigantic contribution so he has a right to ask questions about what happened to his animals um, but he's not part of the structure of the mining agency so he's a little bit of an outsider i really liked him as a character like kingston is my favorite um his dedication to these animals and his curiosity so this book definitely tries to explore what it would be like to live in space and where humanity is going and what our future could look like what are some of the problems that might occur with space travel like how are we gonna do if we're living on a ship what happens to like that first generation that like they bring up the point that there could be an issue with the first generation like their parents brought them on the ship and they had no say in it whatsoever and maybe there's still a collective memory of what earth was like and so there might be resistance between the generations on the ship which was interesting there's also just the technical parts about traveling through space and how is it going to work how is the space the spaceship going to work out are the animals all going to be okay is plant life going to be fine can we compensate for all of that do we have a proper ecosystem running in it super loved all those thought trains of thoughts as the sci-fi person um it does definitely have this mystery element to it though so if you weren't it, it doesn't get too deep into the science part of it so if you're not a huge science fiction fan you can still go into this book and kind of wonder about the legend of the ship and the mystery of that um, angle on the whole i enjoyed this book it took a bit to get into it so like the prologue of this book starts off with people running through a forest and it took me a while to figure out that they're on the ship and then i was wondering why are they running on the ship and it doesn't get explained for like 40 pages or something so it took me a while to figure out who everybody was it also took a while to get used to like which characters were which this doesn't just follow one person or one family so we're getting lots of different perspectives there's the people on earth there's people working in the mining agency we've got people on the ship um, most of the book is told in third person there are a few parts where this book shifts to first person which gets a bit weird like the first time i noticed that they shifted i'm like wait why what did they shift so the change of perspective is a bit weird it was interesting knowing what's happening on the ship but it was also kind of like did we really need to know what it was like on the ship because i feel like this book also would have worked just from the people on earth investigating the ship and not knowing everything so it took some getting used to it definitely took me a while to get into the story the last fourth of the book though was super interesting once i really got invested in david kingston's story and his perspective and what the mystery of the ship is and trying to figure out the why on the whole i gave this four stars and it has a very solid ending that i loved and characters that i definitely related to but it lost the star because it was so hard to get into the story in the first place so yes i would recommend this book especially if you love mysteries and you love space travel so one thing i would have liked to have about this book would be more information about what life is like on the ship we get some glimpses of it but it's not a lot and that was kind of what i was hoping for so one part that i found interesting was basically the animals um and knowing what exists on the ship and how they survive so like they're not zookeepers on the ship they're not tending them they're let loose and they've given free reign on this one deck 
And so it's interesting to see how the animals adapt to being in space. It's also not all one ecosystem. So it's not just the animals from around England, but like there are antelope on the ship and vultures and things that maybe wouldn't necessarily be part of a farming community the way that most of these other things are. Like they talk about the southern part of the ship being a rainforest and the northern part being more plantations. And so seeing how those different animals existed was kind of cool. And I wish there was more of it, though, because there was only such a small part of this book. Although I did think it was interesting that animals that went extinct on Earth could now be alive still on the ship. Like we could create a separate ecosystem where they are surviving. So on the whole, I did enjoy it. Like I said, I gave it four stars. So if you love sci-fi or you love mysteries and especially psychological things about um, why humans do the things they do and what it would be like to go off into space, this could be an interesting and awesome read for you. So if you have read this book or you're planning on reading it, let me know what you think of it. Also, what are more space travel Noah's Ark type stories that would be interesting? So feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.